Good evening, everybody. Uh, as Tiago said, my name is Mike Hughes. I'm now with the Raw Statistical Society, but I should declare an interest also that all through the, 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 the noughties, I was the director of policy at ONS, and I was one of the key players in the development of the system that we're going to be talking to you about tonight, and Ed Humperson will pick up the threads from me. Um, what we agreed, Tiago and I, was that I would give you a quick overview of the genesis of the British statistical system and how it's arrived at the position it has now. But it's always good to start with a little bit of history. And it's not, I don't think, very well appreciated that the UK has a very, very young statistical system by comparison with most other major countries in the world. I mean, until 1941, we didn't have a central statistical office. That only came about because Winston Churchill said we needed to do something on the war effort. So that was the first major milestone. The second major milestone was a, a, a gentleman called, we're not on the screen, I don't think, Tiago, are we? Oh, there we are. Called Klaus Moses, some of you may have heard of. He was a professor of statistics at, uh, at um, LSE, who had been appointed the director of the, uh, ONA, of the statistical office, and he uh, s developed something called the Government Statistical Service, where he brought together the multiplicity of different departments that compile statistics across the, uh, the UK. Um, the next major development in, in that sense was the creation of something called the Office for National Statistics in 96, when uh, there was a merger of a no large number of separate entities, the Business Statistics Office, the Office for Population, Census and Survey, and the Labour Market Statistics produced in, um, in what was then the Department of Employment. And then in 2000, the launch of something called National Statistics System, and we'll come back to what that means briefly in a moment. And then last but not least, the Statistics Act that was uh, enabled in 2008, developed through Parliament in 2007. And it's a remarkable thing that when you look at the list of countries that are associated with the UN Statistical Commission, at the particular time in 2003, the UK was one of only three countries in the world that didn't at that stage have a Statistics Act. Very quickly, the characteristics of the UK system, hugely decentralised, spread across 30 government departments, each government department having a, a senior statistician uh, uh, in charge of a branch or a division. It's all coordinated through the national statistician. It's devolved, four separate entities, Scotland, Ireland, Wales and England, or Great Britain as it were. It's very integrated these days with economists, researchers, OR people, and I suppose one of the issues we might touch on tonight is where do data scientists fit in with that now? Um, of course, the EU dimension, and depending on the outcome of today, will either still be there or, or not, as the case may be. And then it's hugely globalised now with the influence of the UN, OECD, IMF, World Bank and everything. And as I said, until quite recently, it was previously non-statutory. So what were the genesis for these reforms that I talk about? Um, two things, really. Statistics through the 80s and 90s have really become part of the political process. There were counting problems. I don't know if any of you remember the situation, but through the 80s, there were 26 different changes to the measurement of unemployment, all coincided with Maggie Thatcher's government that was fighting a recession and uh, the num trying to keep <laughs> the number of unemployed down. Crime statistics were a big problem in those days, and they're still a problem now, of course. And the other one, migration statistics. So there were some huge issues about actually the accuracy and the reliability of numbers. But there were just as much problems about release practice and the amount of spin that was being put on numbers before they were actually published. Ministers leaking the figures out in advance or the converse of that, seeking to bury statistics by publishing them on a Friday or on a Saturday and burying the bad news. You probably may remember some of you that immortal special advisor, Jo Moore, who when she was the special advisor at Transport, actually her email got caught out when she advised her Secretary of State this would be a good day to bury the figures. And so that was the, the genesis, if you like, of the need for change. And that change was brought about initially by a Labour Party manifesto in 1997, which specifically said for the first time, you imagine it, statistics in a, in a manifesto, that there would need to be an independent national statistical service. Jack Straw was very much the proponent of that in the Labour Party at the time. And uh, the green paper that followed that, once they came into power, this was a statement from Tony Blair. Can you all see that at the back? Is it all right? 
Yep, good. Um, government is placed to clean up and modernise politics. We want a new relationship between government and citizens based on openness and trust. I mean, uh, if only, if only, eh? Um, so, as I said earlier, that the first major uh, development in the genesis of reform was something called national statistics. And this was something which the Labour Party introduced, where it sought to create a new concept for the first time. And it produced a, a new post as a national statistician. It created a new body called the Statistics Commission, which I'll talk about in a moment. And logo, new codes of practice, whole emphasis on quality, greater accountability. And it was perceived it was going to be, as it were, a new beginning. And part of that process was through this organisation called the Statistics Commission. They were going to be an independent watchdog. And they were to represent suppliers and users. They were to advise ministers of concerns about quality, to comment on the work programmes, etc., etc. The thing that was missing from what I set out earlier was no legislation. The Labour Party copped out on that particular issue of not introducing statistical legislation at the time. And the one thing the Commission were asked to do was to do a review for statistical, to look at this whole possibility. So, moving on, the strengths of the, this system as compared with what was there before was it gave you more rigorous external oversight, raised stand, it was intended to raise professional standards, much more emphasis on quality management, much more focus on users' needs, confidentiality, joined up government, all of these nice buzzwords. The problems were that ministers were still controlling all of this. They were still managing the scope of what were in the statistics. We created this concept called national statistics, and there's confusion about, well, how does that differ from other statistics? The big problem was the fact that ministers were still allowed to have pre-release pre access. That's to say they were allowed to see the statistics before they were published, uh, up to five days in advance. And this new proposal didn't bring any extra funding or commitment from the government. It meant that the national statistician really didn't have the accountability that was expected of him, lack of enforcement, inconsistent compliance with the code, etc. So, clearly, the problem was that the trust issue was still very strong. And one of the things we did in 2004 was to conduct a survey of public confidence in official statistics. And those are some pretty damning figures, aren't they? Only one in five persons believed that official statistics were produced without political interference. 60% thought that the government used official statistics dishonestly. And the most common reasons for not trusting official statistics were they either contradicted their own personal experience. Well, that's not something we can do an awful lot about. But they were perceived to be open to manipulation by politicians. What did come out of that arrangement, however, was a statement that there was more confidence in the quality and methodology of the statistics and of the Office of National Statistics itself. So the general conclusion from all of this was that the production and the outputs were good, but it was the delivery and presentation that was untrustworthy and poor. So that brought back the question again of, does, do, do we need some form of statistical legislation? And Gordon Brown decided, but God knows why he did it when he did. I've often been asked the question, but he made an announcement in October 2005 that he'd make ONS independent in the same way that he'd made the Bank of England independent. There aren't that many close parallels between the two except that one thing of independence. So we all worked hard for an 18-month period with the Treasury to develop a new Statistics Act, and then from that, the creation of this new authority called the UK Statistics Authority. So. The main features, as I say, we've created a new body, the Statistics Board, it says in the Act. That is what all of you now know as the UK Statistics Authority. It's independent of ministers. It's directly accountable to, par to, to Parliament as a non-ministerial department. It took away the oversight role that Treasury ministers had over ONS, and it created a new executive office of the board ONS. But the other thing it did was it abolished that regulator role that I spoke about separately earlier, the Statistics Commission, which had not been particularly successful, introduced a new statutory, statutory code of practice, which Ed Humphersen is going to talk to you about next, and a new assessment function. So really, where we are now, those, the, the Act has embodied those reforms in 2000. The ministerial role is transferred to the board. It has a UK-wide remit. That's to say it applies 
evenly across all three four countries in the United Kingdom, the statutory code, the accreditation process, and what we sought to achieve at the time was the opportunities for data sharing. So I just leave you with a few thoughts for if we have time later on. Just it's been a very quick whistle stop tour over the ground, and I've already exceeded my ten minutes. But can the UKSA be both a producer and a regulator? Is a good question. Do we need, would we be better off with a centralised system rather than the decentralised one we have? Huge debate recently, I don't know if you saw it, when Charlie Bean published his report on the economic statistics of the ONS, where certain people like Andrew Tyree and Treasury Select Committee were saying that ONS should come back under the authority or the overview of the Treasury. And then last but not least, and a bit of a challenge for Red, what is a national statistic? Anyway, there we are.